Hi, I'm Dulce Ruelas. And I'm Danielle Henderson. And welcome to this week's 15-minute public health snippet. So you all know that we have pandemic talk once a month. So this month, we're going to be talking to you about all the restrictions that are being lifted. Yes, so this has been news across a lot of the country, and we will sp focus specifically on Arizona because that is where we are. So it's important to research and take a look at what's happening in your state. But this week in Arizona, the governor lifted the mask mandates. And what that means is that, you know, local or county governments can no longer require masks. However, specific businesses still can. In addition to that, vaccines are also being offered for those older than 16. They're now eligible. And then another big thing that occurred this week is that bars and nightclubs can open without any restrictions. So we wanted to take the time to reflect on that and think about what that means for us as individuals. Yes. So uh, Professor Danielle were and I were talking about what are all these system changes that are being made? How are they affecting us today, here right now as we live through this pandemic? And does it mean that the pandemic is over? Are we living in post-COVID times? So think about all the rhetoric that is being kind of swifted and thrown around and U.S. public health students and a part of the community, what does that mean to you? Are you just listening to the media? Are you in tune to just specific news shows, social media, the radio? Are you reading the paper? What are you reading? What are you gaining from that? Yes, restrictions have been lifted, but are you, uh, as Professor Danielle always says, reading the fine print? Does that mean you necessarily have to do what these new policy changes are um, taking effect. So that's really important. As we see uh, the historical context and how we're living through the history right now that we see all oh, the systemic racism and discrimination and all the inequities that laws and policies from the past are affecting our daily lives now, are these changes that we're enduring through the pandemic and kind of morphing as we go along and progress through the pandemic, how are they going to affect us tomorrow or in our future with, you know, the youth that are right now, the children living through this pandemic now, what are the ramifications that they will be living in in the future, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. So that's where my mindset goes, Professor Daniel, is, okay, all these mandates that we had for, you know, 12 plus months, and now all of a sudden, okay, we don't have them anymore. So what does that mean? How do you translate that? Is it automatically, you know what? I'm not gonna wear my mask anymore. I'm gonna stop washing my hands. I'm not gonna social distance anymore. You know, when I go to the grocery store, or I'm not gonna see the cool sanitizers and the free um, wipes downs when I go to the grocery store at the pumps when I'm, you know, going to the gas station. Like, how does that, information translate to me. And so I've been kind of grasping with all of that all this week, not only for myself, but, you know, for my family and my friends. And how does that um, change my daily life now? What about you? Yes, I've taken a similar approach. So I think with um, COVID-19, whenever there's been new information kind of massively disseminated, such as lifting as restrictions, I like to take the time to first, as you said, Dr. Dulce, read and read in its entirety, read the fine print, figure out what's actually happening. For an example, this week when the mandates were lifted in Arizona, the fine print did say, but you're still encouraged to you know, wear a mask. So it's still there. However, the headlines are that there are you know, no mask laws in Arizona anymore. Um, so I like to take the time to read the information. And then I ask myself, how do I feel about it? Does it make me excited that we're 
seems like we're moving forward and going back to a quote unquote normal. Doesn't make me nervous because I have been doing all these things for the last 12 months and now perhaps it seems a little uh, weird to just stop these behaviors all of a sudden. So I take the time to assess however I feel and there's no right or wrong answer to that. Based on the information that you have, your feelings are warranted. Then based on how I feel, I decide you know what that information means to me and how I'm going to move forward. So for example, if I'm a little apprehensive about it, okay, well, I'm going to continue to wear my mask, social distance, wash my hands, do all that I can. And then maybe, you know, as time goes on, I reassess how I feel. If I become more comfortable, if I feel like the risk is less, then I can change that. But I think the most important thing is to do what is best for you, your family, those around you. So by having as much information as possible, you can make an informed decision and engage in those activities and behaviors that seem okay or comfortable for you to do. I know. I think you bring up a good point about reading and the making informed decisions. So in public health, we talk about how data informs decisions. You know, we make data-driven decisions. And so maybe this is what our elected officials, our public health professionals, you know, whether it's at the FDA, at the CDC, at the World Health Organization, they're making these decisions for populations at large, for the community at large. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, the one size fits all. That's not something that um, is appropriate to say, because as Professor Danielle said, it's what you feel most comfortable with, applicable with all of the information available. But if you're not seeking that information, so what are you basing your decisions on? And then taking it to the next level, are you going to argue with a person that is wearing or not wearing their mask because they're not in tune to your beliefs or to the information that you may have. So we need to take this opportunity as public health practitioners and professionals and you as students that are, you know, kind of learning, relearning or unlearning public health, what are you going to do with that information? Are you going to continue to engage in misinformation, create an infodemic or add to this disinformation that we've created around a pandemic that we're living through with COVID-19? You know, I'll add some links at the bottom of this video about where our vaccines are in, what does emergency response approval from the FDA mean for us now that we're, you know, able to get a vaccine for 16 and older and the eligibility? Uh, what does it mean when some organizations or partners or doctor's office or dentist's office charging for a vaccine if they're available at no cost at other areas? And, and so things like that, uh, we have to look at the disparity of treatments um, that are being headlined, you know, uh, are African Americans not receiving enough or they're not seeking and they're not going to specific Latino uh, communities, you know, we're not uh, working with the hard to reach populations or underserved or marginalized that risk so all these like, like hot topic um, words are being utilized, but how are they being utilized? Think about, so we encourage you with these snippets to think about, critically think, assess, address, to kind of react in a really good informed way, just because you're making um, kind of like a ruckus or not agreeing to go with the flow and with the masses doesn't mean that you're wrong. You know, so we provide this opportunity, this platform for you to kind of think about what is going on in your surroundings and what is going on uh, with the news and the information that is available to you. There's only going to be as much as you want to gain from it. If you're really going to sit down and uh, research and not just go from word of mouth or take our word for all of what is occurring. Yes. And Dr. Dulce, I think you said that beautifully and I can't say any better. I just want to reiterate the idea of, you know, the population based approach, because that is what we are trained to think about in public health. It's a population space. It's system space. It's it's broader. It's reaching the masses. However, at the end of the day, we are individuals. Our population is made up of individuals. Everyone has different circumstances and therefore it's important for you to think about, you know, what this means to you. As Dr. Dulce said, even though we have these 
quote unquote guidelines that are supposed to be, you know, applied to a mass population. At the end of the day, you're an individual and doing the research to make those decisions that are best for you is important. And I think that's one thing we really try to hone in on in these snippets is the importance of being informed, doing research, using credible sources um, in your in thinking about, you know, your health and the decisions that you are making. So we leave you with that. Ask questions and keep digging and keep asking more. It's okay to ask those questions and kind of move and shake the world and kind of reiterate what you're thinking with valid responses, you know, sharing of opinions. And that's the only way that we'll continue to learn. So Thank you. We look forward to seeing you on next week's 15-minute snippet.